We should be like Edward Partridge, of whom the Lord said, His heart is pure before me, for he is like unto Nathaniel of old, in whom there is no guile. To be guileless is to have a childlike innocence, to be slow to take offense, and quick to forgive. These qualities are first learned in the home and the family, and can be practiced in all our relationships. To be guileless is to look for our own fault first. When accused, we should ask, as the Savior's apostles did, Lord, is it I? If we listen to the answer given by the Spirit, we can, if needed, make corrections, apologize, seek forgiveness, and do better. Without guile, true disciples avoid being unduly judgmental of others' views. Many of us have cultivated strong friendships with those who are not members of our Church, schoolmates, colleagues at work, and friends and neighbors throughout the world. We need them, and they need us. As President Thomas S. Monson has taught, let us learn respect for others. None of us lives alone in our city, our nation, or our world." End of quote. As the Savior demonstrated with Herod, sometimes true disciples must show Christian courage by saying nothing at all. Once when I was golfing, I barely brushed up against a large choya cactus, which seems to shoot needles like a porcupine. Thorns from that plant stuck all over my clothing, even though I had barely touched the cactus plant. Some situations are like that plant. They can only injure us. In such instances, we are better off to keep our distance and simply walk away. As we do, some may try to provoke us and engage us in argument. In the Book of Mormon, we read about Lahontai and his men camped upon the mount. The treacherous Amalekiah urged Lahontai to come down, meet him in the valley. But when Lahontai left the high left the high ground, he was slowly poisoned by degrees until he died and his army fell into Amalekia's hands. By arguments and accusations, some people bait us to leave the high ground. The high ground is where the light is. It's where it sees the first light of morning and the last light in the evening. It is the safe ground. It is true and where knowledge is. And to be on high ground, sometimes they want us to come down off the high ground and join them in a theological scrum in the mud. These few contentious individuals are set on picking religious fights, online or in person. We are always better staying on the higher ground of mutual respect and love. In doing so, we follow the example of the prophet Nehemiah, who built a wall around Jerusalem. Nehemiah's enemies entreated him to meet them in the plain, where they thought to do him mischief. Unlike Leonti, however, ne Nehemiah wisely refused their offer with this message, I am doing a great work, so that I, not, I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? End of quote. We, too, have a great work to do which is not to be accomplished if we allow ourselves to stop and argue and be distracted. Instead, we should muster Christian courage and move on. As we read in Psalms, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Evil will always be with us in this world. Part of mortality's greatest test is to be in the world without becoming like the world. In his intercessory prayer, the Savior asked his Heavenly Father, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from evil. But even as the Savior warned of persecution, he promised peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I testify that with the mantle of peace upon us, the First Presidency's promise will be fulfilled. That is, the opposition which may seem hard to bear, will be a blessing 
to the kingdom of God upon the earth. To my inquiring sister and all who seek to know how we should respond to our accusers, I reply, we love them. Whatever their race, creed, religion, or political persuasion, if we follow Christ and show forth His courage, we must love them. We do not feel we are better than they are. Rather, we desire, with our love, to show them a better way, the way of Jesus Christ. His way leads to the gate of baptism, then the straight and narrow path of righteous living, which takes us to the temple of God. His way is truth and life. It is eternal life. Only through Him can we and all of our brothers and sisters inherit the greatest gift we can receive, eternal life and eternal happiness. To help them, to be an example for them, is not for the weak. It is for the strong. It is for you and me, Latter-day Saints, who pray the, pay the price of discipleship by answering our cu accusers with Christian courage. I conclude by making the testimony of Mormon my own. Behold, I am a disciple of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I have been called of Him to declare His word among His people, that they may have everlasting life. I bear my special witness of Him, that our lives can be everlasting because His love is everlasting, that we may share His eternal, unconditional love with our brothers and sisters everywhere, is my humble prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.